Assuming you already know how convolutional neural network works, from one perspective, when we have an input image, we just select a portion of this image, like this 3x3 three three area, and we know that each pixel is represented by a value between 0 and 255. And we also have a kernel that we know that each value in this kernel is updated by backpropagation. And how do we apply this kernel to this area? We just simply multiply each value of the kernel by the corresponding value in the pixel, and we sum all this up, and we end up get a value like 600 and something. But the question that's important for us is, where should we store this result when we look at the exact portion of this image, but in the output feature map? And the answer is, we store it at the center. And what about the other values? We just convolve the kernel. But you should already know this, right? An analogy of doing this, but with the graphs instead, is that we are having a graph in a 3 by 3 grid structure we have one node at the center, and all other nodes are pointed to this node at the center. And what are each node's value? This is just exactly the pixel value. And what about the edges? Those are just the kernel values. But let's just leave this 3.11 behind, and I will discuss it later. So. If I want to apply convolution with this graph instead, I just do the same thing. I just take a look at the value 48 of the, of the node at the top left and multiply it by the edge, which is 0 0.12. And then I do it for the node at the top and the other node at the top right and all the other nodes and sum these all together, and we end up getting a result, and exactly like convolutional network, I replace this result by this value at the center. And one way of intuitively looking at this is that each node in the neighborhood has some sort of information. One has information 48, the other has information 109, and so on and so forth. And since they are all pointed to this node at the center, they are interested to pass their information. So the center node in next iteration is represented by a weighted average of the neighborhoods. You can kind of consider the center node as yourself and all the nodes in the neighborhood as your friends. And each friend has some influence on you, which is represented by these age weights. And the way you look over time would be different based on how your friends have influence on you. But an issue that this approach has is that the way that you look currently has no effect on how you behave in the next iteration. And this value of 52 is completely disregarded. So how can we preserve that information? We need to take consider this missing kernel 3.11. And the way that we do it is that we just add a self loop and the edge value for this self-loop edge is this exact 3.1. And like before, we multiply the value of 52 by this 3.11, and we end up get a result, which now we can replace it by the current value. Okay, so you can kind of have a rough estimate of what is graph convolution neural network. It's just some information passing from the neighborhood to the node itself. But it has some issues right now. One of the issues is that only the values of the center node is going to be updated. What about the values of the nodes in the neighborhood? And the other issue is that we don't always have this well-defined grid structure for the graphs. What if we have graphs in different topologies? How can we do this? So let's answer this. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just say I have a graph with three nodes and two edges. But instead of representing each node by a single value, let's just now represent each one as a two-dimensional vector. And let's name the first one as node 1, and then node 2, and then node 3. Before applying graph convolution on neural networks, we just need to first find a way of representing the relationship between each nodes. And for doing that, we just create a matrix. Each row is a node, 
and each column just shows whether it is connected to that node or not. If it is connected, we set the value to be 1. If not, we set the value to be 0. So since node 1 in the first row is connected to node 2, we set the value to be 1. And since it is not connected to node 3, we set the value to be 0. And likewise, node 2 is connected to node 1 and also connected to node 3. Node 3 is not connected to node 1, but it's connected to node 2. And what about the diagonal entries? As I said, we need to preserve the information that they already have. So I create a self-loop edge. So I should create all the diagonal entries to be one, a connection from one node to itself. And I call this matrix A, which denotes adjacency matrix. Followed by this matrix, we have matrix H, that the first row is the values of the first node, so that 3, 7 vector is represented in a row now, and the second row would be for node 2, and the third row would be for node 3. But what happens if I just multiply this adjacency matrix by this matrix H? Let's just see that. By the definition of matrix multiplication, I just need to multiply the first row of the matrix A by the first column of the matrix H. And that would be this thing. And I then sum all this thing up and I receive some value. And again, I multiply the first value of the matrix A, but now instead with the second column and sum this together, and that would be the second value of the result. And when we look at the multiplication, now it's only either one or zero and simply we just disregard the third value and when we look at the output matrix we place the first one here and the second one here so let's just do that and once we do it we realize we did nothing except adding the first row of matrix H by the second row which is exactly like what we want right I said the value of node 1 in next iteration is the value what it already have plus the value of node 2. So that is the value of the result when we are looking at the node 1. What about the node 2? Since node 2 is connected to itself and node 1 and node 3, it would be n1 plus n2 plus n3. And what about node 3? It would be itself plus node 2. So now as simple as that, we just passed some information from the adjacent node to itself while preserving the information it already has. So a question that you might ask right now is, what if the information in one channel is more important than the other one? For example, the first channel that has the value of 3 and 8 and 5 is more important than the second channel that has 7 or negative 1 or 5. Who knows? Or the vice versa. The other question would be, what if the information of one node is more important than the other one? So when we look at the node 2, what if node 1 has more influence than node 3? The same thing that I initially mentioned. To answer the first question, we simply multiply a matrix W. And to see how that works, we can visualize the matrix A edge and see what happens if I multiply the matrix W. So again, we multiply the first row by the first column and we add this thing together. But what it means is that when we look at the output AHW, the final output, which is a representation of each node after this graph convolution for a single iteration, the first value of N1 would be a weighted average of first and second channel after this graph convolution. But that weight is updated through backpropagation. So it might learn that the first channel is more important than the other one. So W11 would be bigger than W21. And what about the second value of node 1? We multiply the second column. So it would be another weighted average that now it might learn the second channel here is more important than the first one. So one way of looking at this is that each column in the W is similar to different kernels that we have in convolutional neural network. 
but the difference is in convolutional neural network, each kernel learns different features from a spatial relationship. But now we look at the channel relationship and we learn a representation that in one kernel, it might learn that first channel might be a bit more important and the second kernel, which is the second column, learns that, I don't know, the second column would be a little more important. And of course, I can map from one space to another. If I just add another column to this W, then each node, now after applying this graph convolution, would be represented by a three-dimensional vector now. Or I can downsample it and have only a single kernel now, then after applying this graph convolution, each node, instead of a two-dimensional vector, would be represented only by a single value. And surprise, surprise, this is graph convolution on your network. But when you look at the original paper, you will see this formula instead, that it has one A tilde, which is the adjacency matrix plus identity matrix, which you know why we add this identity matrix, just to preserve the information it already has, of course. But the thing that we also have is this D tilde matrix, that when we look at the definition, it would be sum of all the rows in this adjacency matrix. So we can kind of consider this matrix D tilde as some sort of normalization that we add. Why do we add this? Because let's just say I don't have this matrix W here and I only have matrix A and H. What the first row means is that I sum the value of node 1 and node 2 and place it on node 1. But when I sum these two values, it would be bigger and bigger, right? Because I just add them together. So scale would be different after applying this convolution. And just to keep it within the same scale it already is, we normalize it by summing all the values in a single row and dividing it by that value. So node 1 in the first row would be divided by 2, node 2 in the second row would be divided by 3, and node 3 would be divided by 2. And at the end, we have this function sigma, which is the activation function, just to add some nonlinearity in the neural network. And what about the second question? What if one node is more important than the other one? That is actually another variant of graph convolution, which is called graph attention networks, that based on the attention mechanism, it assigns different weights to different edges, instead of just simply assigning the value of one. But that would be another topic, which is not covered in this video, and that would be all. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like and subscribe, and until the next video, goodbye.